This tutorial will explore a common use case for GemCut Studio, and that is recutting or proof cutting an existing design, either design that you have on paper and you want to see how it looks before you cut it, or you have access to it digitally, but you just want to go through the cutting steps and understand the design better. So for this example, we'll be working with this Tessie design, which I've got as a PDF, and we'll be recutting it step by step based on these uh, sort of paper instructions. So I've got this PDF loaded and we'll be bouncing back and forth between the PDF and GemCut Studio that's running here behind. Okay, so let's get started. Let's start with this pavilion. So the first thing to note is the um, first angle is 56.86 degrees. So let's first start by setting that to 56.86. And now for index values, we'll notice the first index is 96, uh, and we've got six index values total, so that makes sense since this is a hexagonal design. Um, and the, the jump in between is, uh, we're jumping by 16th, right? Every step is a jump of 16, so we know it's symmetrical. So because we've got six values and we're symmetrical, um, that's pretty simple and our first index was 96 so we'll set the base index to 96 set symmetry to 6 and the cutting instructions say to cut to a temporary center point so we'll do that and we'll notice that the uh, the values for index values we get here uh, are coincide with the ones that were in the instructions so that's good so we'll go ahead and cut that Next step is the same index value, so we don't need to change that, and we're cutting at 90 degrees, so obviously we're establishing our girdle, our um, outline. So angle to 90, and then bring in the cut, and just cut enough to leave some for the crown later. Right, for the next step, we see that we've got, well, we've got double the amount of index values, um, so this can either be double the symmetry, or we could be using a mirror on the same symmetry. So let's have a look at the numbers. First of all, the first uh, index is 4 and not 96. Uh, let's have a look at the jump between 4 and the next one, which is 12. So that's a jump of 8. And then the next jump is also by 8, and then 8 again, and 8 again. So we know that this is symmetrical because the jumps are all equal. So uh, we'll set the angle to 44.48. And um, since we've got double the amount, so we've got 12 indices, base index is 4. And so we'll set base index at 4 and symmetry to 12. and cutting instructions say uh, to meet at the girdle. By the way, if you were doing this right, you would probably type in the, the same uh, instructions if you were gonna replicate it from something that was just a paper version, but I'm just gonna skip that here to, um, to simplify things. So we're meeting at the girdle, so we'll just jump in once, and then the next jump will bring us to the girdle, so we'll jump in again. Yep, there we go, that looks good, cut it. Okay, so the next tier here is at 43.6, so let's just start by putting that in, 43.6. And uh, if we look at the index values here, we see we've, we've also got 12, uh, but we're, we're starting at a base index of 5. And if we look at the jump between each index, um, so between 5 and 11 is a jump of 6. Uh, but between 11 and 21 is a jump of 10 and not 6. So we know we're not symmetrical. This isn't just a 12 uh, symmetry cut. So um, let's have a look at this first index. So 5. Um, let's go back and look at the last index is 91. So if you notice that we're in base index 96, uh, 96 or 0 in the case of the first one, plus 5 brings us to 5, and 96 minus 5 brings us to 91. So we could uh, assume that we've got a symmetry of 6 with a doubling up a mirror of plus or minus 5 for each index. So the first index being at 96, plus 5 gives us 5, and minus 5 gives us 91. So let's try that and see if we come up with the rest of these uh, sequence here. So base index 96, but a symmetry of 6. 
And now for mirror, we said we wanted five. So looking at the cutting instructions, we're meeting that one at the girdle as well. So let's just jump and the next one will bring us to the girdle, jump. And then if we look at the, the list of index uh, values we've got here, uh, we can compare that to our paper version and see if that gets us what we want. So 5, 11, 21, 27, yeah, that looks good. All the way through. So that was the right setup to get this here. So anytime you see a list of index that don't jump by the same amount, um, assume that you're dealing with a mirror. So divide the number of index values by two and then use a mirror to get double the amount again. So that looks good and the result we've got here um, does look like our intended crown uh, pavilion, sorry, a result that we're, we're expecting. So that looks good. I think we've got it. We'll cut it. And now for the crown. Uh, so our first here is at 70 degrees. And we'll notice the index list is the same as that those first two cuts. So uh, basic six-fold symmetry. So we'll set the angle to 70 degrees and base index 96 with six symmetry. So base index 96, we'll remove the mirror and then six symmetry. Switch over to the crown and set our angle to 70. And then we're looking to cut a level girdle So we'll just leave some girdle material there and cut. Uh, next one is at 34.48 degrees. So let's set our angle right away. 34.48. Uh, now looking at the list of indices, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight eight values so we're looking at either a symmetry of eight or four with a mirror uh, let's look at the index values 9 15 so a jump of six and then 15 32 that's more than six so we're looking at mirror and so because we've got eight index values and we know we're probably mirrored we're going to set symmetry to four and then uh, to deduce our mirror, we'll have a look at this first one was set to 9 and assuming base index of 96, uh, 96 plus 9 gives us 9 and 96 minus 9 gives us 87. So that would give us this first set. Um, so let's try that and see if we get this the right result. So uh, we've set our angle. Let's set our symmetry to 4 base index to 96 and a mirror of plus or minus 9. So uh, then the instructions say to meet at the girdle. So we can use the jump. And then here we're meeting, next one is at the girdle. Yep. So it looks a bit strange, but that's kind of how the, the design progresses. And if we look at the, the resulting list of index values we've got, we can see that that matches with the ones we expect. So that was the right setup for it. So we'll cut that. Next up, angle 30.46. Um, this one's a lot simpler. We've only got four index values and they seem to be jumping from 0, 24, 48, 72. So that's a jump of 20. So that's, that's a straight four symmetry with no mirroring. So, and a base index of 96. So we can remove the mirror and then from 96 with four. And uh, what are we doing for cut? So we're actually floating this one in. So, um, so we got to be careful here. We'll see that the uh, tier C on the design is this one here. And so it's cutting into tier B that was before it. And so the goal is to create a checker, which is sort of evenly spaced and evenly sized squares. Um, so with this setup now, uh, as we cut in, let's get a nice flat double click to get a nice flat view of our crown and we'll zoom in. So 
we can see that we're looking for this this facet here to take up sort of sort of roughly a third of the distance uh, and, and create sort of thirds with this B tier next to it. So B and C would occupy more or less the same uh, area. So we're we're sort of eyeballing it. It is a, it is a float uh, meet, but um, so this this looks all right. The lines are a bit crooked. We could fix that later. Um, but the distance, the size of the width here for B versus C looks pretty much on point for for tiers. So I'm going to leave that as is, and we'll cut that the way it is now. And for the next one, uh, 28.35. And so, yeah, it looks like we've got another uh, simple four symmetry, except our base index is now 12 instead of zero. So 12 plus 24, yeah. So that's that's fourfold um, symmetry with a base index of 12. So let's just set it up that way. So symmetry is already at four. Let's just set our base index at 12. And then instructions say that we're cutting this one to meet A, and A was our original 70 degree cut so that's we're meeting with these these tiers here so we're going to jump in there are not, next one's going to offer to meet at that junction and then double click from the top we can see that that gives us a nice little sort of beginning of a square for this this facet here so that looks good we'll cut that um, next one is at 20.89 And as far as index list, uh, that looks like a very simple fourfold again, base index 96. So fourfold, base index 96. And cutting instructions say we're meeting with C, which is that floated in set that went through the middle. So it's, we're meeting with this one here. So that next jump will meet there. And there you go. And we've got a nice squarish um, facet there. So we're going to cut that and then the next one's more obvious because it's the table just at zero and we're meeting to create that last little square in the middle. So we'll set our angle to zero and then jump and then we've got our square, cut that and we've got our design replicated. All right, just for kind of a bonus exercise, let's Let's have a look. If I double click on this, you can see uh, that this the line here for this um, this set of facets here. Um, something's a little bit off on it, and I know it doesn't probably doesn't make a huge difference, but for some people this this will annoy. So let's maybe just fix that up. This one's also a little bit crooked, but let's assume we'll just fix up this one here. So what we can do is we can um, select the tier and then edit. Pull back on depth to sort of uncut it and then jump back because we wanted to use this meet point here. We do want it to meet there. So we've just jumped. So we're going to add a meet point where we just jumped. And then we're going to double click to make sure we're nice flat facing up. And then we're going to play with a fine adjustment to fix up that line. There you go. That sort of flattens out those lines. So let's just change the angle slightly. Uh, it's to get more of a checker. As an extra little bonus thing, I always like to uh, evaluate performance after I've proof cut a design. In this case, if it's from paper, we've never seen it rendered. Um, so in this case, the PDF says the design works from quartz to CZ. Um, right now, Gemcut Studio's using its default for quartz, and we can see that the, it appears that there's a lot of windowing around the edge of this design. Uh, and by tilting it, you'll see that sort of the reflected area just kind of moves around like a, a bit of a reflector. Um, but there's not a whole lot going on on the edges. So let's just see if we can improve that a little bit. I might not try to go as low as quartz for this because quartz is pretty unforgiving. But let's just move up slightly to something like topaz, which has a slightly higher uh, RI. We've still got that sort of issue of of a lot of windowing up along the sides. Let's actually confirm that that's windowing by enabling a separate window color and I've got mine set to red. So you can see there's a lot of windowing happening on the side here and our performance probably isn't great. So if I just uh, just focus in on 
uh, ISO and um, windowing. You can see that windowing sort of hovering around that 40% mark for any tilt range within 30 degrees and our performance on ISO is suffering because of that. So let's see if we can do better. Let's close that out and let's just jump into the manual optimizer. There you go. So the, the one we've got right now is this one here, and you can see the graph that we had before. Um, but just looking at it really quickly, it's pretty obvious to see there's better options that give us a lot less windowing. So let's just evaluate those and see if they're any better. So right now I'd be choosing either this one or, or this one. Uh, they're obviously higher crown because we're going 120% of their crown angle range. So, but yeah, the, the windowing, um, especially face up, decreases dramatically. So... We've got a better looking gem, at least from the from face up. And of course it starts to window a little bit as we tilt, but that's low RI, but it's still got lots of uh, what appears to be scintillation. Uh, so it's, it's nicely performing. If we compare it to this, where we've just sort of got an area of interest that's moving around the gem, this uh, looks a lot more interesting through a range of tilt. So I would choose something like this, or maybe even a higher crown angle, you know, experiment with, with the different ranges. But right now as a quick fix, before I would cut this, I would probably just try to pick another set of angles. So let's try this one here. And so that's just changed our crown angles to, uh, to even steeper, uh, a little bit more bulbous, but if you've got the rough to do it, this would give you better performance. So let's just turn off window color, and then we'll get a better, better idea of, yeah. So it looks like a nice little sparkly gem that'll cut something really nice. So there you go. That's a really good way to uh, use Gem Cut Studio. Even if you never cut a design in your life, just proof cutting someone else's design and then optimizing it is a really good way of avoiding surprises and not ruining precious rough.